Nick Goldschmidt, winemaker for Goldschmidt Vineyards, Forefathers in Boulder Bank. And here I'm going to talk a little bit about Southern Hemisphere wines. I may come back and do some more later and talk really specifically about particular regions, but I'm just going to give you a little rough overview of uh, New Zealand, Australia, and a little bit about Argentina and Chile. So the amazing thing about Chile, and I'll start off with Chile because I've just come back from there. I still work down there about four or five times a year. Chile basically is a very narrow country, whereas Argentina is a very large country. The west coast and the east coast and the Mendoza region is a little region at the, foot of, at the foot of the Andes and San Juan, which is the next region just to the north, is also under the shelter of the, of the Andes. Chile on the other hand faces the west or is on the west coast and so we can imagine that it's a little bit more undulating in terms of its temperature. The problem with the Andes being so tall is that we have a lot of cool temperatures coming straight off the mountains and so Mendoza and particularly Mendoza we have a lot of hail that affects the vineyards and we'll probably get two or three hailstorms every year in Argentina. So when we go to Argentina you'll notice a lot of hail nets uh, protecting the vineyards whereas in New Zealand we'll take those same nets and we use them for bird protection. So quite different but use but with the same nets. In Argentina it's not about where you are in terms of latitude, it's where you are in terms of altitude. Mendoza is a relatively high area and we here grow Malbec, a little bit of Syrah and Cabernet but primarily Malbec being the major varietal. Malbec is a large berry varietal and so what we do is when we crush those grapes we'll actually take out about 30 to 40 percent of that juice because what we're trying to do is increase the wine to pulp ratio or the, sorry the skin to pulp ratio so by taking juice away we basically shrunk the size of the berry and concentrated the skin and so on fine Malbecs you'll find wines that do have a lot of tannin and that's because we've done this process. San Juan region is very interesting. San Juan is further to the north and actually a lot of grapes from San Juan, particularly Syrah, go into Mendoza. Mendoza known for Malbec, San Juan known for Syrah. Those berries or those vineyards are all about altitude and we'll actually have vineyards that we can ski in the winter. They're so high up. Chile is very different. We have the Aconcagua in the north. We have Mayapo, which is very close to Santiago. Then we have the Rapel region, which is made up of Cachapol and um, Colchagua and then of course we can go down to the Curico region and uh, again further south. These regions are dramatically different and again they're controlled by the Andes but instead of being about altitude they're actually all about the rivers. So these rivers are flowing off and the Rapel has got two major rivers, the Cachapol and the Colchagua, uh, coming down towards the coast and that's how these river valleys or that's how these Appalachians are broken up. And so these vineyards are quite dramatically dr different. They can be high high gravel, high stone, and also we do plant on slopes. So we plant on much steeper slopes than what we do in Argentina. So a completely different aspect. So that's a little bit of brief overview of Chile and Argentina. You'll have to come with me if you want to find out more. In New Zealand, we talk, New Zealand's a pretty interesting country. It's basically three islands, one is very small, and it's just basically a, a fault line. There's two fault lines, one that runs this way and then one that runs this way. <coughs> and of course these are the Alps uh, and this primarily is the South Island that I just want to talk about Marlborough because I talked earlier about New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. If we take Marlborough, it's basically two main valleys. There's the Awa tree, which has a river flowing down through it, and then we have the Wairau, which is this other river that flows out into Cloudy Bay. So this is the top of the South Island. This is Cloudy Bay out here. And we have this mountain range between the Awa tree and the Wairau. So when people think about traditional Marlborough, they're mainly talking about the Wairau. The Awa tree is a relatively new appellation, but it's also part of Marlborough. The problem with the Awa tree is we have more frost, we have cooler, cooler conditions, and the wines here tend to be more of the green bean character. Out in the Wairau, we have two very different soil types. We have what we call the Brancot, and the Brancot is this side of the river, where the rivers 
subsequent rivers flow off the mountains into the main part of the Wairau. On the, this side, this is what we call the Rapara. The Rapara is mainly made up of river stones. And so you always know where you are in Marlborough. If you pick up a stone and it's round, you're in the Rapara. If you pick up a stone and it has a sharp edge, you're in the Brancot. Because these soils come from glaciers. So these soils are many, many years old. And uh, when the glaciers came off this mountain range, they form these, this series called the Brancot. On the other side, we have the Rapara, which is mainly made up of the river gravels that form through time as well. There's another really unique area too, and I'll just touch on that a little bit. It's called Dillon's Point. Dillon's Point is an area that's just a little bit, well, a little bit lower in the ground, so the vines are actually in salt, in the salt water. And when vines are in salt water, they're under a little bit more stress. We have a wine that we produce called Boulder Bank, and Boulder Bank comes from the soil. And if you try that wine, it's a little bit more of the, I don't want to, I use the term armpit, but it has more of a sweaty Sauvignon Blanc character, which has really garnered a lot of attention in the UK. And I'd really recommend that you try Boulder Bank, and you can try it, and you can get a little bit off Fino Shipper, um, but it has more of that character. On this side, we're actually talking about more of the Brancott soils, and we have a little vineyard out on the Hawkesbury River called Forefathers, and this vineyard here has more of the citrusy grapefruit elements. So this piece here is what we call the main brancot. This area here is, is called the Omaka. And then we head down towards the southern vales. And I misdrew that, but we are in the Omaka area. So this style of wine is more grapefruity and citrus. This style of wine is more of an armpit character. And off the Rapara soils, you get more of the grassy characters, and so quite unique. Just another little area I want to touch on is the McLaren Vale versus the Barossa. If you look at a map of South Australia, there's the two, well there's more than two main Appalachians, but the two Appalachians that are most commonly known for Shiraz is the Barossa and then the McLaren Vale. The Barossa is a true valley, just like the Alexander Valley is or the Napa Valley, the, Bar uh, the Barossa Valley is a true valley, it has steep sides and it's a narrow valley that you can drive through. The unique difference with the Barossa Valley is though, you're about an hour and a half from the coast. So to get that cool air to come up through the Barossa Valley actually takes quite a bit of time. So you get warm days and warm nights in the Barossa. And that's the important piece. You don't get a lot of cooling down of the grapes uh, during the nighttime hours because the temperature stays up. Now if you're in Adelaide and you head south, you come to a territory called McLaren Vale. McLaren Vale is really unique. In fact, it comes off the hill. Uh, this is more towards the south. The sun comes more in this direction. And what we'll find is that the vineyards that we, we really choose to grow are up on these benches. Uh, and you can see the ocean from up on top of these hills. So your nighttime temperatures are much cooler than they are in the Barossa. So McLaren Vale, you get longer hang time. From bloom to harvest, you get a much longer hang time because your nighttime temperatures are relatively cool, whereas in the Barossa Valley, you get, warmer day, you get warm days and warmer nights, so your hang time is a little bit shorter. So in the McLaren Vale, and we produce a forefather Shiraz from McLaren Vale, you get a lot more black pepper and spice, whereas in the Barossa, you'll get more of the white pepper, and that's the unique difference between those two appellations. So hopefully that gives you a little feel for Chile and Argentina, Marlborough region in New Zealand, and a little bit about McLaren Vale versus Barossa.